republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, we thank you for the blessings of the day. We thank you that we live in the country that we do, even though there are faults at times and we, we fail to be what you would have us to be. We are still one nation under God, and we need your help and we need your benefits. Lord, we just pray, God, that you would continue to be with this great country, be with our people, be with our county. Uh, so many that are going through difficult times right now. I pray that you would uh, be with them, help those that are out of work, help those that are underemployed, help those that, that are sick today, and continue to have your hand upon us. And we pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus and everybody said. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. All right. Can we have a motion to approve the minutes of May 21st? So moved. A second. Mr. Bradford? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Am I out request for appropriation of transfer of funds? Are there any questions or comments in regards to item two? Hearing none. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. In the matter of approving payment of the regular schedule of accounts for the various funds, moral obligations, and then amount now certificates in the total amount of two hundred and fifty eight thousand three hundred and fifteen and twenty nine cents. Questions or comments in regards to item three? Hearing none. Motion to approve. A second. Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. In the matter of accepting meeting minutes? Questions or comments in regards to item four? Hearing none. Motion to accept. Second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. In the matter of request for appropriation of funds? Questions or comments in regards to item five? Hearing none. Motion to approve. A second. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. In the matter of Ohio Department of Youth Services subsidy grant funding application update regarding juvenile court. Are there any questions or comments in regards to item six? Hearing none. I will make a motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. In the matter of authorizing the Sida County Sanitary Engineer to enter into contract with Lake Point Energy Harbor regarding the fixed rate price per kilowatt hour bid. Questions or comments in regards to item seven? What is the price per kilowatt hour? Point zero four zero six, which is a reduction in power cost. Can we get a motion? So moved. A second. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Anything further, Ms. Coleman? Not at this time. Mr. Crabtree? Nothing. All right. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen of the press. Mr. Mark Craycraft? Saudi County Daily News. Okay. We are at the opening. We were at the opening day of the splash pad. What What are your expectations for this season's attendance? Would you say the community can now safely begin to play and enjoy the summer activities? Oh my, that's pretty wide ranging. Actually, there's a lot of summer activities. Um, speaking of the splash pad. Um, of course, um, we are hoping that um, people will feel comfortable coming to the splash pad. Um, we've taken all the precautions and measures to make sure that um, it's as safe as can be. Um, we need the public's help in doing so as well, uh, as far as the social distancing part of it, uh, which is very hard. It's difficult when you have kids. I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be a, a challenge. Uh, we have 
what we would call a lifeguard there to help with that, but it's still going to be a challenge. Um, of course, other activities uh, will be um, made available as time goes by. The tennis courts are being unlocked today, uh, so that's that's going to be available. And even with tennis, there's a you know, a, some guidelines that go with that, how you're to conduct yourself when you're playing tennis. Uh, coaches and others have been uh, told what those are. So um, our expectations are that hopefully soon we'll be able to go back to uh, the way it was um, as officials, um, health department individuals, doctors, others, epidemiologists, make those decisions, then we will pass that along and, and, and do that. But, um, you know, there's been so much canceled already. I was, I was so frustrated and sad about, like, little leagues and, and youth sports and all of that being canceled. And, um, you know, without those things, you know, there's the, you know it's hard to have uh, the expectations that things are going to go back to normal anytime soon. But we can hope that come fall, uh, that as this virus dissipates and continues, we continue to see the drop in hospitalizations across the state and the country, which we are seeing um, in Ohio. Uh, we're seeing that. Of course, in our area, we haven't had that. Uh, we've had some cases, 15 total, 14 recovered. Um, and the one that is not recovered yet has mild symptoms, so that's good news. And, and and is not hospitalized. So, you know, hopefully we'll be able to, to get back to uh, quote unquote normal as soon as possible. And uh, let's hope that's sooner than, than later. Is that good? <laughs> okay. Good. Ms. Sin Mackley. Scioto County Daily News. Scioto County's unemployment numbers are significantly lower than much of the state. What would you credit that to? Do you think that bodes well for our area's recovery from the COVID shutdown? Our, our unemployment rate is 15%. It was 8.2 in March. Uh, we, we had a little bit of a bump in March as we were seeing people being laid off. Um, this third and fourth week of March is when things really started to kick in. Um, and then April was in full bloom. Um, just a little bit of a background, I did look at some numbers. The County Commissioner Association of Ohio put out a chart showing new unemployment claims per county for all of April, which is a, it was a really enlightening chart. Um, and you see a spike in the first week of April, and then it has just boom, 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 like this, as people return back to work. Um, we still have over 2,000 outstanding claims in Scioto County. That number is actually significantly lower than most counties. As, as uh, Ms. Mackley has pointed out that it's lower, we're ranked, I think, 65th out of 88 in the state. Um, we have bounced around in the top 20 uh, for years. So. Um, what it points to is, is that many of our jobs were deemed by the, the professionals as essential. Of course, we've said from day one that they're all essential, but they did categorize essential versus non-essential, and in the non-essential, unfortunately, you had a lot of service industry employees, restaurants, barber shops, beauty parlors. These were deemed as non-essential. Of course, we found out after about six weeks of not having any of those services that we all look pretty bushy and <laughs> we find out how essential they are. <laughs> but uh, we, uh, you know, they were essential to the people that held the jobs. But the majority of our jobs were deemed essential. Uh, if you look at our largest employers, the hospital, even though 400 were furloughed, um, they're being slowly, they'll be slowly brought back as the elective surgeries get kick, kicked back into place. But even with that, 400, we still did not go past the 15. Now, we may get June's numbers, and, and I'm sorry, April, but we may see May's numbers and even see more. We may, I, I don't know. Um, there's a potential for that. But if you look at the unemployment claims in April, how it was going down in the, 
in, in May, I'm sorry, in May, how they were going down, that we may have just hit our peak of 15, but it, we'll have to wait and see. But if you look, the hospital, Southern Ohio Correctional Facility, Star Community Justice Center, um, you know, Pepsi, most of our manufacturers, if not all of our manufacturers stayed open, they were deemed essential. Um, government, medical, you name it, those were all considered essential. So even though we had a great number of people that were laid off or furloughed, it could have been much worse, but because most of our jobs were deemed essential, it, that did not happen. So um, we are at 15%. I was, looking at, I was looking at these numbers just this morning. Um, it does bode well that we will bounce back faster. A matter of fact, with our non-essential people going back to work now, um, you know, and I mentioned some of those already, that should improve rather quickly, I would think. The problem I see, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kathy and Mike, the one area I see that's going to be a weak spot is restaurants because they haven't been able to fully open. We, we understand that, the 50-50, you know, 50% occupancy, which I've talked to several restaurant owners, and they're like, this is not sustainable. We cannot operate like this. So hopefully it'll open up sooner, especially with we're not seeing the increase in cases. The hospitalizations dipped quite a bit yesterday. Uh, the ICU um, has dipped quite a bit. We're, we're, we're hovering around 300 for the entire state. So I, I think hopefully as things progress, we don't see a large bump from opening up, which is the great fear that everybody has right now. And we totally understand that. Matter of fact, everybody you talk to, they will say, and even our own health professionals locally, that they expect a bump. When? We're not seeing it yet. We're not. We're, we're not seeing it yet, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. People need to be responsible. People need to continue to be responsible. I think restaurants is the, the big area that we're going to have continue to see a struggle. I really do. I spoke to a manager at a, uh, it was one of the chain restaurants, and they said the restrictions were so challenging for the in, uh, dining in again that they just didn't know when they were going to open because of yeah. the, what they were going to have to go through. Yeah. And, and I can understand that, um, so we'll have to, we'll just have to see. Depending on the business model mm -hmm. of that particular establishment, um, it's really crucial. Like, I, I was talking to an individual, and I, my heart just goes out to him and his wife. They own a pizza place here locally, and they have a game room, and it really generates a lot of revenue. That game room is, is really the difference between them making a decent profit and a good profit. Um, and, you know, people go into business to make profit. They, they don't go into business not just to break even. They, they go into business to make money. That, that's what entrepreneurs do. And I just felt so bad because they're not able to really open up fully. Or, or at, that, at the point I talked to him, he wasn't able to open up at all because of the nature of their business. And it, it, every business is, is the same but also has different variables that impact their profitability. And until we can overcome those and really fully open, we're not going to see the full rebound that we could. Um, Ohio as a whole, prior to COVID, was starting to see a downturn. I looked at this, and you, know, you look at February's numbers and you see March's numbers. We were starting to see a downturn statewide. Um, our own numbers, we were hovering around last year's numbers, which it's one thing to tread water, but eventually you want to do better than treading water. You know, um, losing jobs is the last, I mean, you want to avoid that with everything you've got. And that's one thing that Saudi County has been successful in doing here lately is, is, is stopping the loss of jobs and creating new jobs, and that's proven. But this is really, this has been like a, hitting a brick wall, this particular virus, the pandemic. So we got to we got to focus on recovery, but we have to get past where we were pre-COVID. And there was some challenges. There was some headwinds that were happening in the economy overall that we need to, we need to do our best to overcome. If our tax receipts were any um, indicator of the resiliency of our economy, 
last month was pretty good. We did not have a loss, and it was something that we um, actually we went through the meeting last Tuesday, and we and, and nobody it was the last Tuesday or Thursday when we did our taxes, and no one asked us about it. I didn't think about mentioning it, but we actually had a bump um, over last year, so we're still seeing an increase. But those were March numbers, and when April hits, I don't. It's who knows what's going to happen there. But the fact that our unemployment didn't go sky high like some other counties boats that people still had income there were people getting unemployment there were a lot of people that didn't and that was still hard on a lot of people but people were getting stimulus unemployment there was still monies out there for most but we also realized that unfortunately the state unemployment system crashed basically and people didn't get their unemployment checks in a timely manner still aren't in, in some cases. I, I, last statistics I saw, there were still 200,000 people in Ohio waiting on checks. Uh, I'm sure that's better by now, that was last week, but it's still, it's unacceptable. Um, but I don't know, we could opine for a while and look at all the variables, but uh, time will tell. It's a great question, it really is a great question. It's just um, time is gonna be, the, uh, I think, the deciding factor on this thing. Mr. Jeff Clea. I'm probably pronouncing that last name correctly. Yeah, it's Clea. Mm -hmm. I went to Speedway last night and was told they were now prohibited from selling self service items, including coffee and soft drinks, per DOH. Is this so? And if so, is this a state or county health department rule? Is this related to the ban on plastic bags that is in effect in some communities? I don't know. Um, I think that, that's a question for the health department. Um, we can try to find out. I'm, I'm not sure. I, if I had to guess, it's more of an Ohio Department of Health um, rule that's been passed down and has been distributed to all of the um, businesses, if I had to guess. But that it's probably a Ohio Department of Health issue. And of course, that'll be enforced at the local level, but we don't have any information on that. Mr. Mark Craig, what is the timeline for the work release program to resume? I don't know. Um, it was something that um, came to mind the other day. Um, I did ask last week, and at that time there was not a, uh, a date that had been set yet. That is something that the judges are going to have to work with probation and then of course the sheriff. Um, with facilities still basically locked down, um, until we can remove prisoners from those facilities and have them out in public and then take them back, um, I don't know, that's not gonna happen um, until that happens. So I don't have an answer on that right now. But as soon as we do, we'll definitely get back on it. That's something we, we definitely wanna do. We, we need to do it safely, though. Ms. Trisha Morrison, concerned about the Chillicothe City Pool being closed. Other pools are open in other counties. We need this open for our children. The, 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 the Chillicothe, what? Chillicothe Pool being closed. She may be talking about McKell, or McKinley. McKinley Pool, I mean, it's on Chillicothe Street, kind of going out 23. It has to be, I'm guessing. I, the city's working on getting that open. Uh, I knew that they had advertised for lifeguards. So hopefully they're working on that. Um, that's, a, that's a city project. And if, they're, if they have lifeguard applications out there, I guarantee you they're working to get it open. As far as a date, that's a question for the city manager. I'm sure he'll be able to handle that one. Why? I think it's just that egregious. Um, you know, I, I was coming back from uh, being out of town and I didn't get to see, I think it was on the first day when that all happened. I was um, just very 
I, I didn't know we was traveling and everything. But when I came back, I, I saw it. And um, one one thing we don't do is we don't respond quickly to news stories um, because you just never know what's going to come out the next day. You know, there's always two sides to every story. Um, it's, it seems that way most of the time. And um, I think it's important to look at all the different aspects of that um, in viewing the one video. And then there was multiple other videos that came out of the same incident. Um, it, it, it became painfully obvious that definitely um, something terrible happened there. And police brutality can't be condoned um, in, in any shape or form. And, and basically that's what happened there. Um, and I, I, I believe that everyone needs to understand that we, we shouldn't judge all of law enforcement because of the acts of a few. And in this case, it was a few. Um, but it was just so egregious, and, and, and we, 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 can't, we can't have that in our society. Um, and we, we need to, to let people know that we support our law enforcement locally, um, but we also will never, ever condone that kind of behavior. Um, we, need to, we need to make sure that uh, in this case in Minnesota there's justice. And, and I know that there's steps being taken to do that. Um, pray for the family. Um, unfortunately, uh, they can't bring their, their loved one back, but, uh, but they can see justice done on their loved one's behalf. And, and, they need, and that needs to happen. One way or another, whatever happens, whatever the investigation brings forth, whatever, you know, whatever which way that goes, that needs to be done and it needs to be swift. Um, and, uh, and I will say this too, I, I, I I watched the news this morning, and I was just totally flabbergasted about the what's happened since. Um, two wrongs don't make a right. It, it never will. And uh, I understand people are, are upset. I understand that um, people are angry, and they should be. But creating more victims is not the answer because you have business owners that have now lost their businesses. You have, you have property damage. You have all of these things that are happening to other innocent people. And that's not the solution. The solution is to let the system take, take its course. And it looks like they're doing that. The wheels of justice turn very slow and people need to be patient. And I know that it's a hot button issue it's, it's a tough thing, but uh, we can't condone, nor should we ever condone this kind of behavior from anyone in a, in a civilized society. It's just, it's not, it's not good. I hope that answers the question. Okay. Anything else? I have none. All right, okay. It's, uh, we're wearing short sleeve shirts in here because it's about 85 degrees here in the uh, commissioner's office. <laughs> we, we, yeah. Yeah, we actually have the windows open in the building. It is, we have sunshine, and, uh, but it's, I think it's adding to the heat. So <laughs> it's a little warm here, but, uh, but we're happy. We're happy, and, and uh, we hope everybody stays safe in the county, and, and uh, we'll be back next Tuesday. And can we get a motion? So moved. A second. Mr. Crabtree? Aye. Ms. Coleman? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Thank you.